start presenting, uh, individuals can actually join us uh, from YouTube as well, because that's the whole idea, so that individuals will be able to join us from YouTube. Uh, so just give me a minute. Let me set up the YouTube uh, bit of things now so that uh, any individual that is joining us would be able to see that we have started on YouTube. So just give me a minute, um, then you would uh, be able to see that I've started the session on YouTube. So I'm just trying to complete all necessary uh, setup that is required now. So, um, as I speak, I'm just completing the final setup in terms of uh, YouTube. So, um, people will not be able to join us on, on Google Meet anymore. Uh, every individual that click on that link will be redirected to YouTube. So, I'm just completing that final uh, checks. Uh, good morning, everyone, anywhere you're joining us from. Uh, this is the webinar, Mastering HR Data Analytics. So, um, I think we are all set now. Um, all links are going directly into YouTube at the moment. Uh, we're currently at 135 attendants or participants within the room. And this is 10.01 a.m. UK time. And um, we are going to be uh, setting all functionality uh, for the class right about now. So uh, thank you so much for joining us for this session. It's a brilliant one, a uh, beautiful day in the city. Uh, I was almost saying the city of Lagos, but I'm not currently in Lagos at the moment. So um, I think I would rather say the city of, um, I mean, one uh, small place within the UK. Uh, so it's a beautiful day from the city of UK, from the country of UK. Okay, in terms of quickly acknowledgement of a few individuals. Uh, so we're going to be having um so from the room i'm just going to read a few people um a few thank you for those joining us from nigeria lagos nigeria thank you for those joining us from the uk uh thank you for those joining us from canada yes our canada people are in the room now uh if you can hear me you can see me just let me know in the chat room you can see me so we have representation from the uk we have representation uh, from Canada. Um, our Canada people are currently early in the morning. They're about 6 a.m. They're about, depending on which part of Canada you are at the moment. Uh, then thank you for those who are joining us from Nigeria. Thank you for my Kenyan people. Uh, I've seen individuals from Kenya, and I think Kenya is about two hours uh, ahead of Nigeria. That's about three hours ahead of me. Uh, of where I am at the moment. Thank you for those joining us from Kenya. Then I've seen a uh, participant from Zambia also in the room. Um, I'm also people from the Philippines. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, your time zone will separate, definitely be different. You're likely going to be in the afternoon or early morning, depending on where you're joining us from. Thank you so much for everyone that have actually joined this session. So I'm just confirming that YouTube is on. Uh, so any individual that is not able to join us on Google Meet now, we are currently at 140. If you are not able to join on Google Meet, all links in the emails have been redirected to uh, YouTube. So what that means is that if you're joining, if you're clicking this link after I've started the YouTube uh, live stream, you would be redirected. So I'm seeing someone from Ethiopia. Uh, great to have you here. So yes, I just confirm um, I'm streaming directly to YouTube as well. And every individual that is able to join can be able to see what is happening on YouTube. 
So um, I'm going to be starting the class um, right about now. Yeah, thank you so much from Dubai. I'm seeing a lot of individuals in the room. I will just take the next few minutes to welcome everyone. Then I will go straight uh, into um, the conversation that we are having today. So I've seen Ethiopia, I've acknowledged Ethiopia, I've acknowledged Dubai, Ghana. Thank you so much for just joining us from Ghana. I'm just looking through the chat room just to take the next few minutes to welcome everyone. Then I'm going to go straight. Yes, thank you for confirming you can see me. Thank you for those joining from Uganda. Thank you so much. Now, um, I'm going to be reading out uh, in terms of uh, what we're going to be doing today uh, in terms of the rules of the webinar. Uh, it's critical that we should get familiar with the rules. Uh, the rules is what makes the world go round. The first rule is please put your audio, uh, mute your audio. I've done that already as the admin of the room. Uh, but the interesting thing about it is that if your audio is currently on, uh, if uh, you uh, click on it in error, kindly put it on mute. I've actually muted everyone. The only time you'll be able to unmute yourself is when we get to the question and answer session. Then I would, you would raise up, you use the raise hand functionality. Then I'll give you the opportunity to be able to uh, unmute your mic. Then secondly is all videos must be off. Uh, please just put all your videos uh, off. Uh, the videos are not necessary for the sake of the class, uh, just so that it will reduce a lot of distractions. Though I've tried as much as possible to um, pin my video and my slides so that everybody can follow me and reduce all the distractions in the room. I'll, I've already mentioned this. If you're joining us and you're yet to drop your name, and your location in the chat room kindly do that um so that you'll be able to join us interestingly uh at the big at the registration for this class as at the time i closed the registration we had about 790 registration for the class and that was massive i'm not sure uh that number can contain everybody and that was the reason why we had to open up the room uh, for everybody it means that there is a lot of interest around the subject area. And that is why we're streaming on YouTube at the moment. For those of you that have joined us on YouTube, uh, you're welcome. For those of you on Google Meet, you are welcome. I'm gonna be taking questions uh, from both parts when we get to the question and answer session. Uh, just the same way, uh, drop your name and your location from where you are joining us from in the chat room, either within Google Meet or on YouTube. We currently have 140 on Google Meet at the moment. That is not possible to enter to take 700 individuals. That's why we had to open up to YouTube. Thank you for those come joining us from Lagos, those joining from Canada. Thank you for my Canada people. Thank you for Uganda. Thank you for Utopia, Dubai. And the list goes on and on in terms of location. Now, please, as much as possible, uh, don't interject when I start the class. Uh, there will be time for questions and answers. So interjections are not allowed. Yes, you can use the chat functionality. When I get to the point of question and answer, I will look through and pick specific questions then i'll also give opportunities for people to ask live questions which means you can raise up your hand and ask your question at that time i'll give you ability to be able to unmute and ask your question when it is time for questions you can raise your hand there's a raise hand functionality i'm seeing some hands raised i want to believe it's not that they have a question i'm suspecting that they only wanted to use the emoji uh, to say that they are following me. I'm sure it's not because uh, they have a question. So if that's the case, you can drop your hand uh, so that there will not be distraction in the course of the session because I will not entertain the raised hand immediately now. If you want to keep it raised till we finish, fine. That's your choice, but I'm not going to entertain that at the moment. Then we 
are targeting one hour 45 minutes uh, i'm going to be taking a one hour lecture now um and that one hour lecture will be a combination of two things one i'm going to introduce theoretical concepts uh, around mastering hr data analysis then i have some powerful case studies i have two case studies that i'm hoping that time will permit us to complete within the space of the one hour if i'm not able to complete the case study within one hour i would push the time for question and answer a little bit further so that we can be able to have that case study and interestingly uh, i have this is a free session but i'm going to be opening up an opportunity for people to learn from me one-on-one -on -one after towards the end of the session so if you choose to leave before the end of the session you may miss that opportunity uh to be able to have a one-on-one -on -one session uh because what the outcome it's not possible for us to complete the entire hr data analysis within one hour 45 minutes that is why i'm going to be opening up a four weeks intensive session for individuals to learn hands on with me with case studies so if you're interested in that wait till the end of the class then i'll be able to release that goodies for you now let me get into my class right about now so welcome to mastering hr data analysis welcome to mastering hr data analysis my name is shegon akiode and i'm going to be your host today and many individuals will be wondering uh what's the pedigree that this guy has uh to be able to take this session Interestingly, I'm a reward analyst uh, or what we call reward specialist. I have over uh, 10 years experience within reward itself, about eight years uh, experience. And interestingly, I've had opportunity to operate within Nigeria before now. Most recently, I moved into the UK and I'm gonna be sharing some interesting good news in a couple of weeks individuals should take puts so i've had opportunity uh to operate within nigeria and also operating within the united uh, united kingdom that experience will be shared in a couple of weeks in terms of specifics i've had opportunity to um i read chemical engineering i'm a born teacher i like to do what i'm doing now and i like to give a lot of things out i love knowledge sharing and that's why everybody will be wondering why would someone give out over two hours of his time for free that's me that's shego that's me for you and i want to democratize knowledge i want individuals to be able to understand the concept of analytics coming from a chemical engineering background analytics come easily to me i crunch the numbers compensation and benefit reward every related state that is shego for you so we're going to be having an interesting time and i'm going to be delving into uh the session in full i have different sections um so we start off by asking ourselves the question why should anyone bother about hr data analysis that would be the very first question that anybody would ask or anybody would be interested why should i bother ah interestingly uh, i have some reasons here i will get to the point where we need to ask us a few reasons why do you think you are bothering why do you think you are interested why are you really interested in this concept so starting up um before now in the past uh hr people are already <laughs> they rely majorly on understanding gut feeling as we call it oh i've been doing hr for donkey years so i know hr i understand hr you don't need to tell me about how to decisions within hr interestingly uh they they do that and they they make decisions even to their stakeholders business owners and they make those decisions based on gut feeling but those days are long gone and a survey uh, that was performed by shrm society for human resource management 
uh, in a particular white paper they released called Use of work Workforce Analytics for Competitive Advantage. They say survey evidence shows that HR's credibility as starts to increase when they use data to make decisions. That's a survey backed up. So it's not gut feeling. <laughs> so I'm not giving you gut feeling. Interestingly, I'm going to be releasing some interesting statistics in this class because I cannot use gut feeling to teach a class on HR data analysis. I need to back it up with data. So every single conversation I'm going to be having in the class today will be backed up with a bit of evidence. And the first evidence is from SHRM saying, survey evidence show that HR's credibility increases as it starts using data to inform its decision. So as an HR professional, a business owner, a business leader, and you are in this room, it is very critical that you need to start to use data within your decision making process as an hr professional hr leader whatever stage of hr you are hr data analysis will not only help you to diagnose and solve people problems that's not the only thing it's going to do it's going to take you a little bit further it would help you make the hr function and yourself look good and help you to positively impact the organization's bottom line gone are the days where hr people feel that they are just ire and fire gone are the days when hr people think that they are not supposed to have a seat at the table they already have a seat at the table for your seat at the table to be substantial then you need to use data very critical data is very critical for you to use to make decisions because it's going to impact the bottom line organizations are looking at cost today organizations are looking at revenue organizations are looking at competitive advantage and the only business the only language that businesses understand is numbers so as an hr professional that you are in this room i congratulate you that you're in the room because it means that you are ready to take your hr career to the next level very critical hr data analysis provides a way to demonstrate the linkage between people and business outcomes people on one side business outcome on the other side the connection point between is hr data analysis very critical and you need to start to think okay so what is hr data analysis so i've given you an evidence why hr data analysis now what is hr analytics now let me clarify that i'm going to be using some words interchangeably here hr data analysis hr analytics i'm going to be using them a bit simultaneously when i use the word workforce analytics talent analytics people analytics i'm going to be using them interchangeably because they they are one and similar in itself so when i look at hr analytics and i'm going to be using evidence so i mentioned it earlier on it's a data driven class and i would not come here and give you information that are not verified first information according to the cipd that's a chartered Institute of Personnel and Development in the UK. Define HR analytics or people analytics or workforce analytics is about analyzing data about people to solve business problems. When you look at the data, you have a business problem on one side, you get data to solve that business problem what you are doing when it involves the people is you're doing hr analytics so when you have a people problem you want to solve problem based on the data about your people to solve your business problem what you're doing is hr analytics now let's look at another evidence according to shrm society for human resource management in the us 
HR analytics, people analytics, talent analytics use measurements and analysis technique to understand first thing, improve and optimize the people side of business. Very critical. When you take measurement, what is measured, you can track it. And once you track something, you can improve it. If you are not tracking, if you are not measuring, you cannot track. If you cannot track, you cannot improve. Very critical. So when you now use analysis, measurement, and analysis technique to understand, to improve, and optimize the people side of business, HR is a business on its own. It is not just business as usual or play, fire, I am fire. No, it's a business. So SHRM says when you use measurement analysis of techniques to understand, improve, and optimize people's the people side of business, what you're doing is HR analytics. I'm not going to one more evidence is from the C CPHR in the in Canada. HR analytics is both the act and science. So it's two way. There's an act side and there's a science to it. So when I look at HR analytics, there's this art side to it and there's a science side to it. What does that mean? The science tells you the principles you must follow. The act is how you would apply the principles will come from experience. How you would apply the principles of HR analytics will come from understanding. So there's a lot of body of knowledge around analytics. If you do not have the act side of it, you will not be able to apply it. So there's a science and there is an act of leveraging employee data to inform strategic human resources decision now we have a body of knowledge we have data on one side we have the people on one side we have the business decisions that need to be made your ability to move from data to insight to inform your decision is about what we're talking about when we're talking about hr analytics and we're going a step further and our next level is big data I know there are a lot of buzz around it. So I'm going to be using, I'm going to be mentioning some buzz words, big data and human resources. Data is the new oil for business. No doubt. We cannot contend that. It's the new oil. Data is the new oil. And if data is the new oil, then you need to understand data. And now understanding data, data are pieces of information a set of quantitative or qualitative facts and details about a substance or an entity. So when I look at an employee, the name of an employee is a fact. The date of birth of an employee is a fact. Uh, the date of employment of an employee is a fact. Then you will need to work with that fact to get information. So when I process uh, the date of birth to get the age of an employee, what I've done is I've created a, 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 an information for you. Then when I have the age of the employee, I can now choose to do the demographics in terms of diversity, in terms of age of my employees. If I choose to track gender of my employees, I can go a step further to know the, the gender parity, male, female within the organization. If I choose to track the day the employee was employed, I can use that information to get the length of service. So you need to re recognize that fact, data, information, very critical. Now, when I relate it to big data, do you know how many emails you send in a day? How many WhatsApp chats goes out in a day? How many Instagram <laughs> videos or chat or how many YouTube videos? go off online big data refers to data set whose size is beyond the ability of typical data database software to capture store manage and analyze 
when data becomes massively large that's what we call big data and big data is characterized by three v's the three v's of data volume velocity variety what do we mean by volume large amount of data is being generated every second as we speak do you know the numbers of emails that have gone out the numbers of twitter messages or what we call x that have gone out the numbers of videos that have gone out sensory data you know today uh interestingly our phone now track what we do so if you're thinking about going to eat at a particular restaurant for example and you're speaking close to your phone or your laptop it picks it up then the next time you go online on social media you start to see a particular restaurant advert chasing you around or you're trying to buy a particular item maybe a shirt maybe a phone or anything by the time you mention it one or two times your phone is close to you is listening that's the level of volume of data that is going out then the velocity of that data the speed at which the data is going is on the fly you send an email now boom the email has gotten to the individual within a second if the person's email app is open you can almost be sure that immediately you're clicking send the individual is getting the email that's how massive it is so a few minutes ago i went live on youtube boom and everybody on youtube can verify that they are joining the session and everything is going on fine then the variety different types is what we call structured data and unstructured data structured data is data that is in a particular specific format but a later percentage of data online is unstructured unstructured because they're in form of text messages images the ones that are structures are the ones that are numbers that you can easily identify but also there's also what we call qualitative and quantitative data when i send out an employee engagement survey for example and i require the employees to give specific responses it's going to be qualitative how i feel would determine how i'm going to feel that how how i am feeling at that time would determine what i'm going to complete in the form so if you just finish doing a salary increase and you give me uh, an employee engagement survey to fill i will be so elated to fill the employee engagement survey but if for example uh there's a salary reduction or there is a layoff within the organization and you do an employee engagement survey you can be sure that the the output is not going to be interesting so the three v's of data is very critical now i'm going to pick another data information there's been the conversation around how we can use big data for hr and I'm, i'll pick one example employee retention big data is a powerful tool for improving employee retention in companies that usually experience high staff turnover if you are collecting that data then you can be able to use that data within your organization with big data analytics hr teams of today can implement data driven programs conduct regular surveys on staff satisfaction and locate trends and patterns which provide quantitative data please for you to be able to analyze the trends and the patterns remember what shrm said when we were talking about um hr analytics measurement and analysis techniques is what you will need to get the trends and the patterns in your data so more than the theoretical side of analytics you need to learn the analysis side of it now an interesting example that was reported in the wall street journal is a company called zero that utilized big data to determine why employees stay or leave the organization and they actually did this analysis on 48,000 uh, call center employees. By the time they were done using big data, analyzing large set of data, I'm saying not one day data, maybe five years, depending, trying to do that trend, they had a 20% reduction in their attrition during a six month trial period, just by tracking information about the employees. That's how massive analytics can be. If you are not tracking your turnover, there's no way you can improve it. When employees leave, if you are not doing uh, exit exit interviews to know why they are leaving, there's no way you can track. There's no way you can improve. Very very critical. Then, 
there is also the big word in the room generative ai generative ai who knows about generative ai <laughs> so generative ai we've heard about chat gpt generative ai it's the new buzzword and it's creating a disruption and it's critical i mentioned it now generative ai are set of algorithms capable of generating seemingly new realistic content okay if you have used chat gbt before it's a chat box where you can ask questions you can just say chat gbt i'm trying to write an a cv for a job called hr data analytics hr data analyst can you help me craft my cv and within minutes seconds chat gpt is going to churn out information that's why we call them their algorithms it's more sophisticated than a google search google search will not categorize that information for you but this generative ai will generate it seemingly new the information is there you it will make it will just make it look new it will make it realistic and it can be in terms of text in terms of images in terms of audio from desperate sources different sources they to quickly summarize the multiple data set for you and present an answer if you use canva if you're very familiar with canva canva released recently magic wand and your ma the magic wand within canva means that i can try to generate a powerpoint slide by using any of those ai tools generative ai tools as a matter of fact while i was trying to put this particular slide together i consulted a few of them and i got ideas on how i can make my powerpoint beautiful can't you see my powerpoint is beautiful you can confirm that in the chat room if it's looking beautiful so far it's not ai that thank you for the uh thumbs up it's not ai that designed the powerpoint the final powerpoint i did by consulted generative ai i asked questions around i just texted i just said i'm trying to generate i'm trying to do a slide on hr data mastering hr data analysis can you give me ideas and it started to give me ideas what did i do with it i picked what it recommended and modified it that's why i said the responses is going to give you will look realistic so there are ethical things around are you sure what chat gpt is giving you or bad or um or co-pilot in microsoft or bad would give you the right answer then you need to double check because the referencing may not be there then recently i found another ai tool that can give referencing to every information it gives to you which individuals that are doing projects in school can actually consult then some other organizations or some university are beginning to say please you need to be careful of the way you use ai because uh there's a thin line between plagiarism and <laughs> just picking whatever is on the internet Generative AI offers human resources and HR analysis several powerful, compelling capabilities. As a matter of fact, there is, you can actually use ChatGPT to do VPA codes in Excel. I mean what I said. You can tell ChatGPT to help you write a VBA code in Excel. VBA code that will be functional in Excel. When you write, ChatGPT will help you write it. Then you take it into Excel and use it. As a matter of fact, Microsoft is now finding ways to integrate generative AI within Excel. That is if you are using their most recent Excel updates. And I mean Office 365. If you are using Microsoft 365, it means that all latest innovations will be released to you. But if you're using lesser versions, you may not see most of the updates. So today I can get into Excel and once Excel notices I have a set of data, it starts to give me options by the side. I'll, I'll try if I'll try that when we get into the practical sessions for you to see. ChatGPT and AI Power Chatbot is a great use case of generative AI. Everybody knows about ChatGPT. There's the free version, that is the point three, and there is a point four, which is a paid version, as it were. If you have not used it before, please take note. Now, many people feel that generative AI is going to take their job. I have this to tell you. Chat GPT will not take your job, but those that know how 
to use chat gbt will i'll take that again chat gbt will not take your job in nature but those that know how to use chat gbt will take your job so the question for you now is how familiar are you with generative ai there are a lot of research around how generative ai would transform human resources talent, talent analytics employee engagement performance management the real thing is if you do not learn how chat gpt is being used there's all called chat gpt prompts there's a way you can ask chat gpt questions that will give you answers that you need very critical then according to ai in hr this is what ai in hr has to say ai in hr said what can chat gpt do for hr number one eliminating repetitive task that's what chat can help you eliminate within nature two it can help you accelerate the search for talent now there are organizations that are beginning to integrate generative ai into their hr software so when they integrate generative ai into their hr software rather than have an hr manager or someone in employee relations answering their questions when they get on the software online they can ask questions around their policy so chat they will just get into their hr software if it's integrated to generative ai can you please tell me what our policy says about employee engagement or employee onboarding or leave policy and while they are chatting on the software an answer comes back which is a chat box brings an answer based on the company policy looks through the policy and returns an answer to them that's a use case for generative ai so if you think that everybody will be coming to you within hr ask you question around their policy my brother you need to learn how to use generative ai because it is coming to change the way things are done and it is not going to take your job 100 percent but if you don't know how to use it then you are going to be out of the door very critical it will help to reduce employee turnover it will improve employee engagement and analyzing qualitative HR data. Use of HR uh, GPT, very critical. You need to learn about generative AI. Why HR data analysis again? One, HR data analysis is taking raw data, creating useful information out of it. That's the summary of what I've said so far. Take the raw data, creates useful information there is a lot of talk about big data algorithm automation however the value of data is limited if there is no extract of information and insight there is a strong need for people capable of interpreting the data extracting valuable information from the data and turn that information into insight for better business decisions we can lead to competitive advantage why are we having this session today that is why we're having this session there is a strong need for people to interpret the data to extract valuable information from it and to turn the information into valuable insight yes this session is free but i mentioned at the beginning if you have not joined that towards the end of this class i'm going to be opening up a coaching session that i will hold your hand on how to learn how to organize your data interpret your data and make these business decisions from them wait till the end i'm going to share that information for you and it's not free yes this session is free but that particular coaching session is not going to be free but wait till the end i'm going to inform you about it then let me share some interesting statistics so i did i went on glassdoor and I went to check data for salaries of HR data analysts. I started from Nigeria. Majority of the individuals in the rooms are from Nigeria, but a lot of people are actually moving geographies. They are moving locations. So um, the data has low confidence according to Glassdoor, but it says that the annual salary is 6 million. Hmm. Not much, right? Let's go further. Then I went to Canada. Now, nah, there seems to be a lot of demand for HR data analysts within Canada. And the salary is very interesting. Between 
57 thousand k 57 thousand to 83 thousand that's the base salary range very interesting right and there is also the ability around your movement around the various levels trajectory as a beginner analyst up up there for the us salary went a bit up 66k to 100k yeah that's what you see in terms of what you can earn if you master hr data analysis there is the demand if you even go on linkedin now and just do hr data analysts hr analysts reward analysts these are demands for people that know about data how to analyze data then if you go to the uk very interesting now it may look small but if you convert pounds to um usd or canadian dollars this would be almost about same equivalent about 30 to 46k range of salaries that you can earn annually now no dish for africa i picked nigeria the data was not much so uh, it's a function of the data that being dropped on glassdoor but you will see that there is a demand all across the world for hr data analysts so it's very critical another interesting reason if you're in this room you've just moved geographies you move from where you are primarily or you are intending to move. I'm giving you a, an interesting scope now. If you can start to build a data analysis, HR data analysis portfolio now, which is one of the things that we we're going to be doing in the coaching session, you can build a portfolio, you can revamp your CV to compete within any country you are currently in. I had to do that when I moved into the UK. I dished my CV that I was using in Nigeria, <laughs> interestingly, revamped my CV, presented myself, because I noticed that these are the things they were looking for, revamped it, and I got interviews. As a matter of fact, um, let me not sit down, let me, let me move on, let's move on. Revamping means that you can get offers that will be used. I didn't want to, there's what we call an embargo bag. You know when something is an embargo? When there is a secret you don't want to let loose yet, you keep it. That's what I just realized. That's why I didn't complete that statement. Don't ask me in the question section. Then, so if you want to master, what are the tools we need to master? Time is fast, man. So I'm trying to race for time now. I'm trying to race for time because time is of essence. I still want to get into a practical session and I just check my time clock now. What are the tools for HR data analysis? Number one, your native Excel. You cannot run away from Excel. And as a matter of fact, if you want to build a portfolio for HR data analyst jobs anywhere in the world, you need to master at least two of these tools I'm going to be putting on the screen. One is Excel. That's a native. Two, Power BI. Excel will help you analyze your data, small data, big data, large data, Power BI, Excel can help you for visualization. Power BI is power visual, data visualization on steroids. Then, Tableau. Tableau is also very similar to Power BI. So if you know Power BI, you can easily understand and Tableau because they are all visualization tools. Then there's also SQL. If you now need to get into big data, big understanding data engineering and a few related stuff, then SQL comes in handy. Then SPSS is for statistics. There's no way you can separate statistics from HR analytics. There is no way you can be separated. Then there's Python. Now, when you now start to get into data science, then Python becomes very useful. Then chat GPT. Chat GPT can actually start to write Excel codes now, VBA codes and the rest. Very critical. Now, so that we'll be able to understand the practical that I'm going to be doing now. I need to be able to give you a process to work with from data to insight. From data to insight. How do you do that? You will start with defining the business problem. That's the first step. What business problem are we trying to solve? So there's this aspect of saying uh, Gen Z and millennials no longer stay within an organization as before. The maximum, six months, they say they are going. If they do three months, they have, you have tried. If you can keep a Gen Z or a millennial past one year, then you have tried. You're, you're a star as an organization. 
but you need to understand the business decision you want to solve. That is where most HR people get it wrong. Doing analysis, doing HR data analysis is not just going into the numbers. No. What is the problem we are trying to solve? We are not just going there to just say we want to, we want to start analyzing data. No. You need to understand the business problem. Two, you need to organize your data. When you organize your data, we are doing your data cleaning, you're doing your uh, organizing your data, you're formatting your data, knowing the kind of data that you have. Is it quantitative or qualitative? Then you now go ahead to visualize your data. A picture speaks a thousand words. Just a single picture that I show you speaks, it, it's in, it gets ingrained into your system. Just a single word, a single word, uh, visualizing. And that's the use of your charts, your bar charts, and a few other things, which I'm going to mention in a few in the, in the practical session. Then you need to now analyze your data. There are other analysis, descriptive statistics, inferential statistics that you can use to understand your data better. So measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion. You cannot separate statistics from HR analytics. There is no way that you can separate it. Then you cannot be able to take, get your insight for business decision. So I'll quickly run into the practical sessions that we're going to do now. So I will read the question, then I will go into Excel to be able to solve it. For those of you that I would be sharing the slide for this class in your emails, for those that um, are in the room, I'll, I'll be pushing to everybody that registered, as a matter of fact. Uh, once I'm done, I will share the slide and the practice file and the video. Uh, I will send the link to you after this class so that you can also do a rewatch. It's going, it's going on YouTube at the moment. So once it's on YouTube, it's on YouTube. I'll just put it in the video description on my YouTube channel and you'll be able to see how to get all of this information uh, that I'm sharing. So this is the case study, please. It's a beautiful case study. Please follow me as I read through this case study. Keith Oshodi is the CEO of Cresita Design a company that manufactures and sells low price furniture for office and home use. The company has 980 employees and an annual revenue of $160 million. Last week, Chief Oshodi sent an email to the top management team expressing his concern on the dwelling revenue of the company compared to the past five years of operation to the top management is this is a furniture company selling to home and office use then the bombshell he then directed question to the newly recruited hr hr director that just resumed though he then directed another question to the newly recruited hr director i'm sure most of us will wear this hat hr is always the punching bag he then directed another question to the newly recruited HR director to discuss how to improve organizational efficiency at Cresita Design. Through workforce optimization, he has asked you to speak with the finance director if you require financial data for the past five years. My sister, my brother, uncle aunties how are we going to resolve this one who can help me i'm looking at the chat room what do you think the problem is here what do you think the problem is here okay anybody any question in the chat room okay because of time let me move on so i'm going to be giving you an hint this is an organizational efficiency question Secondly, it's a question related to workforce optimization. So the CEO is looking at how much they are making and how much employees they currently have. And he's thinking, how are we going to resolve this? Now, let me give you an int. This is the int. This is the int. The int is this. As the newly recruited HR director of Cresita Design, you have to prepare a comprehensive report discussing ways to improve organizational efficiency at Cresita Design through workforce optimization. This is the additional information that you have been given. 
the finance director has given you the below company financials for the past five years. Now, when you're doing HR analytics or HR data analysis to make decision from data to insight, you need to be critical that you need to be, uh, in, it's very critical for you to realize that you will not get all the information you need within HR alone. There are some HR data that sits within HR and there's some data that does not sit within HR. What that means is that you will need to integrate with finance. As a matter of fact, uh, every finance individual that I work with in my reward role always want to listen to me. At the beginning, they do not want to listen, but by the time I start to speak, they know there is a reason why I'm asking. So which means when I'm in my reward role, or my analysis role, I wear the art of the business. So I'm not speaking like an HR guy. So as the HR director, you cannot run away from interacting with finance, interacting with marketing. In this case scenario, the finance manager, the finance director has now presented the data between 2017 and 2022. So you have a data for six years here. The last, the data that was shared in the presentation is a 2022 data. That is the most recent because 2023 is still ongoing. Then the last five years means that from 2017 till date. So that is six years window. Now, what you will notice is that yes, revenue seems to be dropping. Uh, I want you to quickly look at it. What can you see in the chat room? Can you help me? What can you quickly see from this? Revenue, 220 million uh in the first in 2017 and 2022 we are currently at 160 million what do you think is happening there something is happening right what you can see is that there's a gradual revenue drop between 2017 and 2022 but what can you see about the headcount yes yes i can see revenue is dropping but the headcount is increasing <laughs> now do you know the implication of Ed count increasing when revenue is dropping. The implication is that we're spending more money on the employees. And what does that mean? Now, less revenue, more staff. But technically, yes, uh, mean staff is not efficiently efficient enough. Now you can understand why the CEO is thinking that the re revenue is dropping, uh, but they need to look at workforce optimization. Now, this is the int to solve this problem. And this is the first int. Int is you're gonna be using a, a matrix called revenue per employee. That's the first int. Now, revenue per employee is one of the most important yet overlooked HR metric that measures the workforce success and their financial contribution to the business, which directly links to business productivity. So, I've seen that paying more salaries. Let me see some of the comments. I think the comments are cracking me up. Paying more salaries and workforce are less productive. <laughs> Very true. I agree with you. We need to determine employee productivity. Very valid point. What is the demographic of the employee? It's a valid question. I'm so liking this chat room. It's fired up. They will go financially bankrupt. I hope they don't. Mean staff is not efficiently enough. Less revenue, more staff. Revenue drops as headcount. Now we are starting to think like HR data analysts. So now there's a thing, there's a point here. The fact that you are the HR director does not mean you should not wear your thinking hat. So I'm I'm so loving what is happening in the chat room now. I'm so loving what is happening in the chat room because you are connecting with the question. Valid question, employees are not efficiently run. That's why the organization, that's why the uh, um, CEO is already talking about organizational efficiency and workforce optimization. So you don't, so that is the business problem we're trying to solve. And you're starting to ask the right question. What's the demographic of the employees? Very critical, very, very critical question. But the metric we're gonna be using now is revenue per employee. It's an overlooked one because it has to, it ties to productivity of the organization. Revenue per employee can measure if your employees are generating enough revenue for your business. It can help you to take the company and how do you calculate it? You take the annual revenue dividing by the total number of employees. Then this metric is beneficial for how you are doing against the competitor. So if you really want to see how you are doing with your computer, just compare your revenue per employee ratio. 
to that of your competitors you know whether you are efficiently run compared to your competitor then a company with a higher revenue per employee is likely to be more productive and profitable very very critical i'm going to go into i'm going to switch into excel now and we're going to quickly analyze this information so this is the second one the first one i'm going to be dealing with is this so let me uh uh, increase my screen so that you can be able to see very well so if you can see now just let me know uh time is fast spent i'll treat i'll say i'm going to quickly run through this so this is what i'm going to do now the same question um i just brought it into excel now this is an additional information the revenue for Chrysita design then this is the additional information for their competitors so for their competitors we now have Act Designs, Debbie Furniture, D&D, Works. Now, for 2022, which is the most recent information we're able to get for each of their competitors, Works is making $250 million with 700 employees. Debbie Furniture is making 180 with 805. D and D is making 165, very close to the 160 that Cresita Design is making, but they are using 810 employees to get that done. While Arty Works is making 170, which is more than uh, what Cresita Design is making, and they are making it with 855. Now, let's without punching any calculator. If you want to make a quick response, can you raise up your hand? I'm going to pick two responses. What can you see from this data? If you want to speak, you can raise up your, use the raise hand functionality. I'll give you opportunity to unmute yourself and you would make a contribution. Can we do that in the next two, three minutes? Anybody willing to talk? Okay, so I'm giving the first access to so um so you can unmute yourself now all done let me see okay so unmute yourself now natty can you unmute yourself Mild Neti, can you unmute yourself now? Are you able to do that? Okay, uh, I'm not sure she's there, he or she. Are you able to do that now? Okay, so let me move on. Uh, I think that that mute functionality is not working as I expected to, so I'll I'll, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that in a bit. So let me quickly just um, quickly run through this. So this is what I have done so far. Um, comparing the data for Cresita Design. Uh, if you look at their revenue per employee ratio, um, our revenue per employee means that you would divide their revenue by the numbers of employees. So over the years from 2017 till date what you would notice is the fact that their revenue per employee ratio has been reducing uh 750 uh and currently they are at 163. but if i compare that to their competitor what you can see from here and what their competitor is doing is that the competitor seems to be more efficiently run than themselves. So the next question, which has been presented to HR, which the HR manager is not asking, is the next question. So let me share the next question from the HR manager or HR director. So. This is the approach of the HR director in order to do that. 
Princess Joyful is the newly recruited HR director for Crystal Design and has been given a tax on workforce optimization by the CEO of Crystal Design. She has now commenced an audit of human HR policies and practices at Crescita Design. She has now made a request from the HRS manager that she wants to see the HR dashboard of the company showing the following key metrics. Workforce headcount by company and department, workforce diversity in terms of age and gender, top five employment sources, performance score, and distribution so i'm reading some of the comments oh so the unmute work so I'll, I'll when i get there i'm going to use it again the four computer seems to be doing better you are right the computer with the last number of employees makes the most revenue which speaks to the employee optimization and experience level of employees awesome so this is looking interesting please can hr get the revenue of their computer is it possible yes HR can get revenue of their computer if they are publicly quoted companies. If you go on every company that is publicly quoted, usually publishes their financials, depending on which stock exchange they are part of. And depending on their financial year cycle, they will publish the financial. So if you want to come, if you want to get information of your competitors, they must be publicly quoted companies. Because once you go into their financial data, you can get their revenue and their employee size. That's another skill on its own. How to understand, read financials from your competitor. Maybe I may think around devoting a YouTube video to that. Maybe one of these days I'll do that. But I need to be sure of confidentiality when I start to display some of those organizations' data. So, but that's not, uh, maybe I'll find a way to face. Yes, you can get that information. So, now, the next question is this. I need to quickly solve uh, this particular question. So this is what I'm going to do. Um, because of time, I have that information. This is the data set. Uh, this is the names of employees uh, that we're working with. This is the information that is available. Uh, the position, the department is available. The date of birth is available as well. Uh, the age of the employees is available, the age group of the employees is available, the gender, marital description, race, date of hire, recruitment sources are available as well. Then I need to modify that data. I modify the data by turning it into an Excel table. Uh, I turn that into an Excel table. Uh, I should increase the screen. Let me see. It's a lot. Um, it's a lot of data. So I'm using a big screen naturally, but it's a lot of data. So uh, is it, I'm sure it's better now. The screen should be better now. Okay. So that's the information that you have been given. Now I've done this. So how did I do that? I'm going to be using what we call an Excel table. So I turned the raw data into an Excel table. I'll and turning it to an excel table means that you will click in the raw data so let me go into uh i duplicated that data for the sake of this conversation so this is the data so i will turn it into an excel table uh all you need to do is go to your home tab and you will see it here format as a table format as a table once i click format as a table it Excel will automatically detect the boundaries of my data. Uh, and it is starting from B1 down to Q. Yes, that's the last part. Down to Q311. So I'll click OK. Then it turns my data into an Excel table. Then in order for me to now work with my table, I'm going to be using what we call pivot table pivot table and immediately i click on that here you see summarize as pivot table i'll click summarize as pivot table it detects the table that i've created it needs to put it in a new worksheet and i say okay now remember the question i'm trying to answer i want to get the workforce ed counts this is the question I want to get the workforce headcount by company and the department. 
the overall workforce headcount and that of the company because the hr director needs that information to talk about workforce optimization then i go in into my data using a uh, pivot table i need headcount first so all i need to do is just to pick the employee ids and i put it under rows then this time around i would modify and say i need the counts can you see that's the total numbers of employees 810 let me expand that screen so the number the total number of employee here is 810 and you can easily see that from here as well just toggle to table design and enable the totals role and you will see number of employees here counts is 810 so the total number of employees here is 810 but i need it in a in a form of a dashboard in itself i need it in the form of a dashboard so i come here and i have it as 810 now i also need the departmental breakdown so what do i need to do let me do this let me come to the department now what i've done is this i'm using what we call pivot table so i just had to take the department and put it into the rows column and from here you can easily see the departmental spread and the departmental spread is showing you that the department with the largest number of people is production so you have production with the largest number of people and you have some other people so if you want to start to think about workforce optimization uh you would now start to think around i understand um i'm using a different data set here so it's slightly different from what is in the case study but it's just to for illustrative purposes but the reality is that whatever data you have you'll be able to analyze it this way uh basically so what this is giving you an idea is that uh you are now having this number of employees you can be able to use your pivot table to be able to analyze that particular uh, um, information then if i go back into my data set and i want to find out about my age group in terms of analysis i go back into that same pivot table this time around and all i need to do is to change my age group which gives me an idea of the demographics of the employee then i can now turn this into pivot table into pivot charts basically and you can easily see uh the larger percentage of people within that organization so this is just giving an illustrative way at which you will be able to visualize your data remember we're trying to create a data story and that data story is able to tell uh the hr director what is currently happening here in itself then if i move on uh now what i need to do the other question around employment sources i would remove this and bring my employment source into scope wow i have a lot of sources of employment i need the top five employment source there's a functionality within uh pivot table that you can actually do a filter of the top 10 uh then i'll click on okay uh that's giving me my top 10 but the question says top five sources so what i'll need to do is to go back into my filter on that top 10 rather than give it as five i will take it to five then i click okay so what you will now notice is that my top five sources for this particular um, organization is diversity employee referrals monster paper click and search engine optimization that's my top five for this particular data set that i'm working with but the reality of what i'm saying in essence is that by the time you start to play with your data based on a business problem then you now start to create insights from that particular data then the last one um, is performance score so i go back to my hr data then i would do summarize a pivot table then i click ok this time around i'm dealing with performance score where's my performance score so that's my performance score was my count of performance score 
then I would create it as a pivot table. Uh, and this time around, I will use this uh, to give me an idea of what my performance score will look like. Now, what this is showing you is almost looking like a bell curve. How many of us remember bell curve? When we are dealing with bell curve in uh, performance. So you can see it's similar to a bell curve. Most of the individuals are at the edge. A lot of people will fully meet basically like that. So what I've just illustrated very briefly, uh, time is not on my side, is just to give you an idea at which you can now start to use data. I know I ran through it a bit <laughs> basically, but it's just giving you an idea that the case study, which is the business problem, would determine your interpretation of that business uh, problem in itself. So now the next, so we've been able to run through each of this case study now, uh, basically, because I want to still be able to pick questions uh, from any body so sh shortly before i start the questioning session uh i would need to mention to you i mentioned at the beginning saying that uh i will be opening up a coaching session uh for individuals that want to learn this thing one-on-one -on -one, that want to go through the problem <laughs> in a sequential uh form and this is what is going to be so i'm glad to them announced for the very first time in a long time that i'm going to be relaunching so i did this like two years ago i did an hr data analytics bootcamp uh i used i used it was a physical session then uh, but now i'm opening it up to an online one-on-one -on -one practical session live session not pre-recorded no we're going to be meeting once you register for it you're going to be meeting on a weekly basis weekends preferably like this i will meet for between three hours to four hours in a day we will go through all the basic concept of excel and power bi and i will take you through a session like this in a more detailed and holding version then we would now do a capstone project so basically this is what we're going to be doing four weekends intensive and practical training on how you can master hr data analysis we will start that then within that period you'll be able to learn how to organize visualize and analyze your hr data to draw insight for people and the business decisions you will be able to all classes are going to be live so you're going to be seeing me live like this we're going to be teaching life within the class then what are the things we're going to be covering two major things we're going to be covering in that class hr data analysis using excel uh, we will look at Excel formulas and functions. We look at Excel table and uh, pivot table. I just rushed through the Excel table uh, and pivot table a few minutes ago, but it's a very brilliant skill everybody should learn. We look at pa Power Query. Power Query is useful for a large set of data. We will learn how to create dashboards within Excel. We will learn how to do statistics in Excel using the Excel analytics tool pack. Then we would also learn HR data analysis using Power BI. Power BI, how do you take your data visualization on steroids? That's what Power BI uh, will be involved with. Then, what's your commitment? Number one commitment is time. You must be ready to commit four weekends. And the breakdown, if you are not committed, please don't sign up. I've had opportunity to do this session one-on-one. -on -one. That's one of the reasons why I don't do a lot of one-on-ones. I have opportunity to do one-on-ones and I discovered that individuals only want to have access to Shelby. They don't want to learn anything. They just want to be looking at my face in the class and they will pay for the class and I will be chasing them to come and attend. So I am not going to do that. If I'm going to be opening up access for class, you must be committed to time. So if you are not going to be committed to four weekends, please don't bother. I can return any financial implication to every one of you. I will return that to you because it is not everybody's laughing. Like I said, everybody like, but that's the reality. Why would you pay for a class and not show up? <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not interested in um, the money. 
that you're going to pay for the class. I'm interested in the value you're going to get. So the reality, and I need to make it clear from now, please. Um, I will not do a class that people will just show up to look at my face. It looks funny, but that's the reality. We will do three Saturdays. We'll look at live sessions and we'll do a project. This is where most people run away. Please, if you are really interested in building an HR data analysis portfolio, and that portfolio is you being able to um you being able to build a portfolio that employers will be interested to pay for then you'll be interested in this class very critical we'll build a portfolio you will launch the portfolio it will be available on your cv it will be available online i will teach you ways at which you can make it accessible that people will be able to watch it and give you opportunity for uh, more um, business opportunity in terms of job search then cost wise i can see in the chat room someone asking me the cost so let me do an analysis what's going to be the original cost one i currently offer one-on-one -on -one session one hour session of my time is 65 dollars if you are to um roots can you please put off your video i noticed that there's a bit of a distraction from your video can you thank you so much so now there's a one hour session if you were to pay for my one hour session is 65 dollars one hour for this four weekends i'm going to be devoting three hours to live sessions for training so um if we were to do three hours let's do the math and we're to do three weekends it's going to be 780 dollars but that's not what i'm going to charge you but this is the original value or discounted value as it were but what am i going to do i'm going to be doing something very ridiculous i'm sure um, what i'm about to do is going to scare some people here number one i'm going to be giving a discount just for seven days or five days as it were time bound discount as it were once the time is off it's off the table and this is a discount rather than pay 780 dollars for the four weekends i'm going to be giving a one-time offer of five days for you to pay 75 dollars that's just 75,000 naira. now but this is the caveat it's only valid for five days expires by 11 59 a.m on the night of november class is scheduled to start on the 11th of november so that is why it is time bound so next week saturday it is scheduled between you have one week to jump on the offer no extension because it is time bound if you miss it now and the reason why i'm doing this is because a lot of questions have come up that when am i going to do it so i'm doing this for this year once i take the class and by the time we start the class, we'll be running into December. So we'll not be able to take anybody to 2024. But this is it. If you need to make payments today, an email is going to be going out immediately. I'm done with this class. An email is going to go out immediately. So for Naira payments, there's a link that you would use. For international payment, there's a link you will use. So as I speak to you, the email will go out uh when i'm doing the question and answer the email will go out so that anybody that wants to make a uh, payment will be able to do that between the next five days now i will add a bonus offer for those that are interested in an hr data analysis internship opportunity so what that means is that for the period that you're going to be doing the class i give you an opportunity to you to do an internship we will deal with live data now what that helps you to do and i think the individuals that would enjoy this the most are individuals that are moving into new territories you're moving into the uk you're moving into canada you're moving into the us and you want to get a job in it as an hr data analyst this would be useful for you because what this helps you to do is that you can be able to put it on your cv you can be able to put this internship on your cv that you have an experience and it's a uk registered company that you will be able to put i'm not going to mention it so that people will not just go and be updating their linkedin profile <laughs> but the reality is that you're going to be able to have life experience uh you can put it on your cv you can optimize your linkedin and it will, and i'm going to be giving you one-on-one -on -one job search support 
So I'll be able to, one of these is I'm going to share it. I don't know whether I should share it yet, but I'm going to share it in a couple of days. I'm going to be doing a detailed CV where if you're moving into a new geography, how do you revamp your CV to get job offers? I'm going to be, I will try to do a, a, a video on that. How do you revamp your CV to get new offers? For those of you that will sign up for this class, I will do it for you one-on-one. -on -one. We would tear down your CV. We will put all the data, we will bring out all the data analysis related roles inside. In all of your years of experience, there's something related to data analysis you have done. You only need to bring it out and put it on your CV. I'll be doing that one-on-one -on -one for everybody that signed up for this class. I'll be doing a LinkedIn optimization for you and I will help you with your job search. When you're applying for jobs, applying for jobs in the UK, in the US and Canada is a different ball game. 